Mm -hmm. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and ask people to mute as we head towards the reading part. Oops, let me, oh, hang on. I'm trying to get, where did, there we go. Make spotlight video. Somehow I did something different. Um, Noah, start, restart your video. There we go. And I'm waiting to do the um, spotlight video. Why is it not showing me that? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just do a brief introduction. How I heard Noah read from Exclusions was via Kai Coggins' Wednesday Night Poetry. If you have not checked that out, please do. Um, this is one of the longest, if not the longest, uh, running consecutive weekly open mic in the country. And Kai does an amazing job of including people and having a diverse amount of voice. So, you know, and the, um, you know, the, the Actually, it's three to four that I heard Joe has. Um, tons of poets that are amazing. Noah was one of the ones. So I'll read a poem, and, and then he had a new book, and I was like, that's it, I'm tracking him down. <laughs> I fangirled on Noah, and he graciously asked that he would um, he did come here and read at our Thursday group. Um, so, with no further talk from me, his bio is in the um, chat section. I'll just read a little bit from there. His work appeared in all different kinds of places. Some of the best using just go, wow, that's awesome. Plowshare and Review, Harvard Review, Poets.org. He does a reading series, and we were just talking about it, Silo City Reading seri Series. It's a multimedia event, uh, music, art. Sounds a lot like what you're doing, too, Jess. Obviously, right in the pandemic, that is not happening. Um, so, for making you the spotlight video, now please take us away. Thanks, Malika. Um, you were sort of crackling and breaking through that whole thing, but I think I heard most of it. And now my screen is my face is huge in my face, so I must be on. Um, so first I just want to say thanks, um, Malika and sort of the redheaded stepchild community, um, for sort of having these live events. Um, I feel like I've been doing a fair amount of them just because that's the way I'm sort of connecting with readers who would otherwise not know that this book is a thing in the world. Um, so I really appreciate any opportunity and spaces that are allowing uh, people to share poems, to share music, to share art. Um, I think that's one of the the things that have been guiding us through this in ways of um, finding inspiration and just sort of helping us uh, move through this wild, um, crazy time. So uh, yeah, so the, the new book is Exclusions, Tupelo Press. There's a link. Uh, I prefer anywhere but Amazon. You can get it basically anywhere books are sold, but I prefer people not buy it through Amazon, um, unless you can only get it at Amazon. But I think if, you, if you're online, you can get it anywhere. So I'm just going to read 10 poems. Um, they're all sort of shorter poems in the collection. Um, the, the theme that runs through it is, as the title suggests, um, excluding every poem is titled Poem Excluding Object, Emotion, Idea. So, the, so I was trying to approach this, this book as writing these these themes away from the poems, but in the writing away, they become sort of the, the guiding light. Poem excluding the metric system. We take each other in like secular holidays, like mountains through binoculars in a televised storm. Here you are, a shit show of everything you've read online. And there's such a revolutionary clumsiness in the way you kiss me goodbye through all of August. The way you navigate the work week with something like a cold war 
settling on your eyelashes. Poem, this has no reference at all to Donald Trump. Just, I, I, this might ruin the poem that I just said that, but poem excluding taxes. On this day in history, the moon died of natural causes. Astronauts were unavailable for comment. There was a white silence in all the rabbit shaped clouds. To comfort you, I read a bedtime story where everything died of natural causes. It began on this day in history, the moon died of natural causes, but we still dreamed it was full. You shrunk beneath the sheets with the most German of smiles. Poem excluding color. We sculpt our bodies until we resemble the town drunk or the sky after it's moved indoors. The sky as a carbonated version of an empty room. Thin clouds. If this were in color, we would only see red. We would reconsider our last requests and let our organs decay in silence become the weather that repeats and repeats in another geography. I'm doing my best not to jump into banter. So when I, when I sort of banter between the poems, it completely derails and goes into like this weird universe that that, that just is a different thing. So I'm, tr I'm trying to just be the poems. Poem excluding answers. Someone spends her entire life dreaming of how it will end. It makes her sad. We sail a small boat within her heart and discover another heart. Though it looks more like a moon lit from within by a single exploding bottle rocket. Poem excluding online dating. In the cemetery, we are the golden age of buzz cuts. The shadows conjugate the sunlight into an architecture of loss. Then evening with its interns and the perfect mother feeding her children at a small kitchen table, and a father grimacing out the window with a mustache so long it scares small animals back into the forest. Music peels the walls in a question of color. I've actually never, no, I'm like I said, I never got into the online dating thing, which may be, I've always been sort of curious about that process, like the, 
which is, you know, how relationship, I mean, I've had, I have friends who I've met online, but I've never like dated them, you know, in a way that's digital dating and we are in the future. So I guess we can do that. Poem excluding modern technology. You fill the pool with cough syrup and the hot tub with a thousand hollowed out cicada shells. A man becomes the state bird in the rifle scope of a child. And the trees the trees remember themselves as seedlings. A teenager mistakes his shadow for an old friend. Together, they think the unthinkable. You climb a tree and grow your hair shoulder length. We are almost too young. Poem excluding politics. Everyone we know with brown hair, blonde hair, black hair, and strawberries in their mouths on the floor of a silent house in the suburbs. Everyone we know with a goatee, a mohawk, a head shaved as a symbol of surrender. Life is what it feels like when you say, it would be good to see you again, with shifting weather patterns and children constantly gravitating toward the monkey bars to start another subculture. The sky moves over them like a bodyguard in a low budget film. Everyone we know gives us a look that says, I'll tell you later. Thanks for everybody for tuning in here. Um, I'm just gonna read a handful more. <clears throat> there, there is so many things to sort of like compete with too. I know that Denez Smith and Ross Gay are also reading right now. And I think that um, like there's a lot of things I'm like, do I not show up tonight and go to these other things that are happening right now virtually? I considered that and I also considered like having them on next to me, but I think that would be really distracting. So um, here I am in my attic. Poem excluding vandalism. The hills fill with hip hop and the last tree blooms through the prologue. At your wedding, at your funeral, we say the same thing over and over forever. All the honest children later become strangers. The locals drink until they are invisible. As if by habit, sadness arrives. We torture it with a downpour of faith, with kissing noises. Later, we don't know how to look each other in the eyes. Poem excluding dialogue. We put on all the clothes we own when the weatherman says snow. You say all weathermen are the same, all snowflakes different. In Hollywood, 
They produce the film version of us walking down the winter street. It begins with the camera panning through every pearl of snow. We enter the frame as a blur amongst the pine trees in a radiant slow-mo. You say things in the slushy street that will later become a novella. At the movie premiere, all your lines have been cut and I don't have a mouth. I'm just gonna do two more and keep it sort of where we are. <clears throat> Poem excluding air quotes. Start with how your father died in the hospital his legs couldn't even whisper beneath the thin sheets. You sat in a plastic chair and took in a view of the parking garage. The hallway was busy with the occasional sound of toddlers chasing balloons, of nurses, fake smiles. You decorated his bedside with a get well card from an ex-wife a tall glass of water. When he passed, you wondered how many people had died in this room, on this bed, at this time of night, when the darkness was making a meal of the world. Uh, thanks again to Malika and all you guys and I'm you know we can talk and hang out virtually as we do um, this poem poem excluding death this is a f strange thing um, it's not in the table of contents nobody found like nobody at Tupelo caught that I didn't catch it it's just sort of like one of those things like the 13th floor is not in certain hotels, on airplanes. There's no death in the book. Death is all over the book, but it's not in the index or table of contents. So poem excluding death. The heart is the most donated organ, she began her lecture. You listened intently with your painted face. You thought of heaven thought of all the possible regions, the region of common nosebleeds, the region of detective dialogue, the region of hospital haircuts, the region of invisible friends, the region of fancy candy dishes, the region where science is understood as fact. Thank you. I, wow. Can I unmute? Wow. Uh, I know my internet is a little spotty, but Noah, there was something amazing about the red weather that I didn't anticipate. Uh, interest energy, Joan, something I think you'll enjoy, and I'm trying to find her exact quote. Uh, these poems are small, exploded bottle rights. <laughs> That's very kind. Thanks. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of us down, um, you know, different lines that resonated. I did want to say I that story, the behind the scenes story of how that poem didn't end up in the table of contents. Wow, that's the coolest error as what then said. I was curious, how did you start, first start writing these poems? Yeah, so um, 
I started writing these poems when I first moved to Buffalo um, about, I guess, around eight, eight years ago, seven or eight years ago. And um, sort of riding the energy of new, being in a new place, working a new job, meeting new people. Um, it, it just, I was excited to sort of participate in sort of the literary culture that was happening in Buffalo. And, and I was inspired in seeing so many writers coming through town and talking with writers. Um, and just, it came out of my daily practice at the time. So they're, they're old poems. Um, and they came out sort of in a burst. I want to say I wrote most of the book in six months and then I tinkered and toyed with them for four years which is sort of how I work like I you know I'll write every day and then have a bunch of stuff to look at six months ago and then sculpt and destroy and rebuild and um and that's how I do a lot of my poems I just, I just feel like get it down get the skeleton down and then build around the skeleton and then once once that that it feels like a thing, then you can sort of destroy it and rebuild it and reshape it. That after when you have fresh eyes, I think fresh eyes is the hardest thing to have as a writer. Yeah, you know, and what was interesting, like I, I did want to hear your derailments, to be honest. Um, but I also wanted to say, see that work because what has like a vivid kind of concrete metaphor that I opened. Up and I was that there's mysteries that are contained in how you do things. It's lovely. I think that set this edit that clearly spend a lot of time with. So thank you for that. Because I have to say, as a reader, that's a lot. Malikia. Yeah. I want to say thanks. I, I heard lovely and then something else and then like the waves. Sorry. I'll write it in the chat. <laughs> Maybe if you push like mute yourself and then unmute yourself and turn your camera off and turn it back on maybe that'll help a little yeah sadly john it's best you know this is the first i've had problems on thursday night but i live in a small area so it might just be a bad internet what i was saying can y'all hear me a little bit better now or still yeah, choppy yeah it's a little better okay I was saying your perfection is obvious in your work. And what I love about your perfectionism is that there were, there's one layer that I get, and then the poem opens the mystery. Like I enjoy that. It's lovely. But, okay. Well, let somebody else talk. Malika, sometimes if you, if you shut off your video when your connection is poor, um, it helps, I found. Not always. Oh, it's John. It's that John. Try. Okay. Jonathan, that yeah. is a good you know, idea. Uh, it's worth a try. It's good to see you, Noah. Yeah, likewise. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry I'm so brightly lit. I'm a little self conscious because I'm just like, if I turn off the lamp, then I look like a demon. Um, and if I leave the <laughs> lamp on, I look like, you know, like I'm going into the light. So I'm a little yeah. freaky. Um, Anyway, I would much, I'd much rather have your good lighting in your attic. <laughs> I've got a question that this, is, this has bugged me forever because I'm familiar with exclusions from back and I've heard you talk about it before. And I just, um, I'm fascinated by the idea of that, like the whole, the, the premise of it. And, and um, I've, I've enjoyed the book. I have the book and, um, okay. but when you talk about uh, all of the, you know, the titles all follow that same cadence of poem excluding X. And the poem goes on to not talk about that thing. But at the same time, in the sense that the title mentions it, it's not excluded. And I want to talk about that sort of contradiction. I want to hear you talk about that kind of contradiction where you're acknowledging something that's important that's missing from the poem. Mm -hmm. And yet you're going on to it to sort of write a poem that's missing it, but I have in my head the whole time that that's the thing that's not in there. So what do you, what, what does that achieve in your, in your mind as the poet? So that's such a great question. I feel like I've talked in different versions about this. Um, I always think titles are stepping 
are doorways or stepping stones into the poem. And I think that, and particularly with this book and these poems, I didn't want the title to play a big role. And I've been for the past several years writing um, poems that sort of live under a one title. So like I wrote a series of poems that are just titled fatigue performances. So they're like just like being exhausted, living in this sort of state and like versus coming up with a title that's gonna um, shape the shape the entire existence of the of the work. Um, not that this these actually do that. They shape the whole poem, like you were suggesting. But I think I just wanted to be open ended. So even in like for example, poem excluding Pilates, um, I don't. I wasn't specifically thinking of Pilates. I was just thinking like, if I put any sort of subject or any sort of emotion as the title here, that's gonna trigger an image in that reader. And I could basically, it's a, it's a chance for me to create a new form and create anything I want. And I like the freedom of like, allowing myself not to be hooked into said thing or said idea. Um, even though in some cases I do directly try to respond to writing war out of the poem or writing, um, you know, air quotes is such a, a random title, but also something that's sort of happens every day in some respect. Like some people are like, you know, they do this, particularly in this format, people are like, you know what I'm saying? And, um, so I think I, I think my answer is just sort of it allowed me a freedom to not con be concerned about it so much, and um, and I and I think that it's it's allowed me to and it allowed me to play more versus like being concerned about uh, what I'm what I'm specifically addressing. Did you have a list of of words and phrases that you wanted to exclude from poems, and then wrote poems from that list? Yes, that's exactly what I did. So I yeah. sort of collected over the over a few months um, things that were that I kept thinking about um, that were relevant to me at that time. And um, you know, I think like thirty or forty of them didn't make the book just because they weren't complete. They weren't strong. Um, so you excluded them. I ex exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I excluded those exclusions, John, and yes. But I think it's so, it really has, it was, it was a fun thing to do. Like I was, for many um, years after writing the book, I was still sort of writing in that format. Like this is how I'm writing a poem. And it took me years to sort of get away from that, that process of writing this, these sort of short exclusion crafts, I guess. And um, I don't know. You know, it takes that makes me, what, what is that poem? Is it The Rules? What's the poem where the, the I, I forget her name, the poet um, writes an entire poem where it says, this poem is not going to do this, this poem is not going to do that. And it's, it, the poem is, is sort of ridiculing all of the rules that poets are instructed to, you know, of things to avoid. I can't remember the title off my head, but it's something like the rules, but that's you know, that way you're describing it made me think of that. Yeah, I mean, and I think that you're making me think of just the, the, the underlying idea of what being excluded is. Like in some ways, everything can be excluded. Everybody has been excluded, um, had moments of being excluded have seen people being excluded. And I think I also wanted to capture that larger idea of just um, not everybody's a part of the conversation, allowed to be a part of the conversation, invited to be a part of the conversation. And these poems are sort of playing with some of that, um, particularly in the literary world. Like it's such a strange hierarchy in a way, um, like publishing. Yeah. How things oh, get. I, I love the way you put that. It, that 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 really make break, you know clarifies how how I'm reading them. Um, that there's the those titles. Be, the fact that the thing that's excluded is conspicuous to me as I read through the whole thing is okay. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. 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 yeah thank also you. Also, now 
I'm wondering, Jonathan, since you um, got Noah to talk about what was excluded from exclusions, <laughs> if we're going to have another book that's, uh, you know, of that, <laughs> doubly excluded. Um, I did want to go with the chat section because um, someone that had to step off, uh, Jerry Grossman said, Noah, your poems are rich in, rich in visuals and their brev brevity is impactful. I enjoyed the respite busy life. Thank you. Sorry she had to leave. And then That's Laura right. figured out that, okay, Laura said that it was Lila who wrote the rules. Lila. Lila. Oh. oh, yeah. I haven't read that yet. I've heard really good things about that. That's it's good to know. Awesome. Um, if people have questions, jump in. I'm trying to make sure I'm not missing any. Yes, John, John. Um, hey, Noah, it's George. How George. are you? Very good. I mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I enjoyed tuning in. I, uh, I didn't know what to, uh, to expect. No. So I've been reading your poems, as you know. Uh, it's in my poetry stack. And uh, I've been reading a poem a day. And to now, I've been reading it in, in a kind of a weird combination of voices. That's to say that, well, you and I know each other yep. and, uh, and uh, we're familiar with each other's uh, vocal mannerisms. So this inner voice who reads my, your poems to me is some weird uh, combination of the two. Uh, and it, knowing me as you do, uh, you probably sense that I, I read them in a quite a different way from the way you read them tonight. I read them uh, uh, not in the serious mood that you presented them tonight. And I thought that the way that you did it tonight really added to the way that I'll read the rest of the poems and uh, enjoy the rest of the poems. I usually resist that. I, I tend to think that an author should stay on the page and the reader should uh, bring his or her own uh, mentality, inner voice to the reading. But, and I've, I've listened to a god awful lot of authors reading uh, what are really wonderful poems. And I come out of those readings saying, Jesus Christ, I wish I'd never heard that person. This time was a, a real rare uh, situation where you really added a lot, I thought, to uh, your poetry. So I'm enjoying them. I'm looking forward to the next uh, publication you know where to find me. I appreciate that. Congratulations. So much, yeah, thanks, Sam. No, I mean, um, it's funny because I've, I've done, you know, a bunch of readings from this book now and, um, you know, sort of some of the versions like this virtually where some of my friends have tuned in and, and they're like, why are you reading your poems like that? Why don't you read them like how you are in real life? And I'm like, well, that's sort of how I am in real life when I'm reading poems. And I think that that's sort of, it's, I want to not, and I sort of was saying that with my banter, because when I go on a banter, it becomes like a different type of reading. Um, and I just want to give space for the poem. Like it's the readings about the poem. It's not necessarily, it is about me, but it's more about just how, what's the best way to share the poem in a way that's um, how you read it. And I, and I agree with you, George, about like, um, I so much more appreciate poems that live on the page versus the the performance not to say that I haven't been incredibly wowed by a number of people who are able to read and perform in ways that are just like next level stuff but um yeah I've been I'm very conscious of that like sort of the everyday conversation how I am with my daughter is a different like the different people I am in the different spaces and time so, but I appreciate that, George, very much, and for reading poems, and it's an honor to be in that stack. I like how you explained that a lot, Noah, with, like, to know, like, consciously aware that you were making space 
to the words with that when the poem and that's lovely that's really lovely joan i know you had a fan yeah uh no i admire the way in you in such a such a narrow space and you're walking that tightrope of uh humor and melancholy and you you never fall into either but you're staying you're staying in both um and your your voice as you read remain remain in both those territories i admire that thanks so much i appreciate that yeah i think that I think that those are two of the things that I lean on most in terms of just sort of sadness and humor or joy and those and that sort of if we broke it down to a pie chart. Um, yeah, it's, you know, I think and that would probably go to a lot of the people who I admire poetry wise, like, you know, early on, I was a big James Tate person and uh, Charles Simic informed a lot of my stuff early on and those sort of their image folks, but they're also sort of dealing with darkness and in that darkness there's humor in ways like tinted with humor and um, I don't know. You were a, a good student. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind. Thanks, John. I'm checking to see if there's any questions in the chat. Um, John, did you have a question? I just who, who me, John? Yeah. I think that isn't anyhow. I'll just talk. Um, I like how you you wrote the brevity. I've I read lots of poems. I've read for 20 years. I'm obsessed with poetry, but a lot of people can't hit the hit it on the nose with the brevity, and and yours was amazing. So. I just wanted to say that. That was really good. I appreciate that. Thanks so much. You're so before we um, go into open mic, I wanted to make sure that I had everybody written down and then also come back to make sure everybody had a chance to ask questions of Noah while you have them here. And we're glad you didn't go to any of the meetings that came here. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to I make a point about yeah. that and i don't mean to be rude how dare you say you're going to miss your own reading we came to watch you we didn't come to miss you i was like what in the world is he talking about them people know, yeah they, they read all the time it's probably recorded you can watch it later but we dedicated our time to come watch you mister you're right i appreciate that john i was literally about to duck out about halfway through so I was gonna bite know. my I wanted to bite my tongue and be respectful, <laughs> but at the same time, I was like, How dare he because you know, we, we came to watch you, we didn't come, you know, to not watch you, and them people they're gonna read all the time. And like Zoom's available now and recording and it's not like they're you know and and I'm glad I came and, and I'm glad you came and because your poetry is really good and um and you, you know, you made it up with your talk and you, you were really nice and stuff. But at that moment, I'll be honest, I was very, I was, I was very, not very happy. <laughs> but, um, with John, I, you know, I skipped Jeopardy for this. <laughs> <laughs> and Christy skipped Bon right. Jovi. <laughs> things were yeah. things you were missing right now, right? Yeah. No, yeah. I, yeah. Loved your, I loved your reading. I'm glad you stuck with it. And I think you should. Um, you, you are, yeah, I made my husband wait for dinner. Yeah. That's a big risk. <laughs> yeah. I'm, glad, I'm, glad you, kind. I'm glad you showed up, poet. Yeah, I was going to say, Christy had the winning story. Christy, what did you leave uh, to come see Noah? I left a live Bon Jovi concert, which I have not done. The only time I've ever missed a Bon Jovi show when I've had tickets is when children were born in my family. And they weren't even mine, so they're lucky. <laughs> that's great i love it for is uh john and christy 
And if I've missed somebody, oh, hi, Laura, I didn't even see you here. You're being so quiet. It's good to see you. Um, not that you're like normally loud. That's not what I'm saying. No, I wasn't on video <laughs> earlier, so I just okay. joined. Okay. Well, it's good to see you. Um, if I missed your name, just uh, something to me. And if you have a question, no, I'm not trying to rush in on a medium of time. If you have another question, ask it. I was curious, are you, um, you, you used a lot of trauma sculpting or like building of poems? It's a very, like, it felt very well hands on. Um, like um, it's, it's, it's about again. Okay. Yeah, I, I couldn't quite hear what you're saying. Um, I was saying that you, the way you described editing sounded very like hands on. And I wanted to hear a little bit more about the process because there was something in your description that fascinated me. And I think it's a different way of approaching editing than I am familiar with. So I was yeah, curious. I mean, um, I mean, I guess I sort of approach, or at least for this book, and in a lot of ways, um, approach a lot of the, my poems as sort of sculptural pieces. Um, not to say like visually sculptural, but like the chipping away until why, if there's any excess in there, why is it in there? And I mm -hmm. question it. Um, so, you know, poetry for me has always been about the, the exact right words and right, or whatever, all those sort of cliches of what it is, but I believe in the sort of perfect sentence and whether it happens in a novel or in a poem, like how can you, how do you write those perfect sentences and how do they sound? Like I... You know, when I edit, I also re do it out loud. So I read the poem out loud. Does it sound right? Does, is there enough space in between this? Um, so it is a very um, hands-on activity, I think, in terms of, I also think in the way of like a building and rebuilding, like it's, a, it's sort of an architecture in a way and um, both how a poem looks on a page um, will invite readers in different ways, whether it's like a huge because I was infatuated with prose poems for a long time and how I was just excited when I came up to a poem that looked like a block. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to, to read this block, this chunk of, of text. And then, um, you know, going in waves of like what excites me and, and how do you sort of live in those spaces. Um, so, you know, for the time being, I'm sort of more, of it, more into the sculpting method of um, mm -hmm. revision and editing and cutting away, constantly cutting. Why, why does that need to be there? Does it need to be there? Questioning and, and, and I think also just revisiting over time. Like I think it, um, I mentioned earlier, like the fresh eyes, reading, reading your own work um, as a different person, you know, like six months from now or a year from now and going back to it and, and saying like, oh, that was not, that's not good. But if the poem is still good a year from now, then maybe it's worth looking at and saving. You know what I'm saying? Next, next time anyone asks me about my editing process, I'm just gonna be like, go ask Snow about his. And that's what I'm just, I'm just gonna use that because I like, that's me. Like, why is it there and why does it need to be there? And, and or excess words and yeah, yeah. So sculpting, that's brilliant. So I'm just, yeah, I'm just gonna quote you. Just take this recording of you talking about it and just be like, listen to him. <laughs> that's generous, yeah, that's no, generous. That, was, that was helpful though because what it sounded like and what i suspected was that so thank you of course oh um my internet is still really crawling um we're gonna move into open mic and i have you first john if you want to and if somebody wants me to stop the repository please you know, just send my private message and i'll be so quietly. Okay, All right. you're next. I'm so. going to start and I'm going to first call your attention to my I Voted sticker. I mailed my ballot in today. Very exciting moment. 
um, at the at the post office stamped with the postmark um, and then tell you that this poem was published um, on Sunday uh, by Jojo Compton, John Compton, um, his new, brand new journal, Madness Muse Press. So there. And the epigraph is from Psalm 102. I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. It kept happening. I walked to work before dawn. I had the key. Something had gone wrong with a boyfriend. Doesn't matter. It, I was supposed to be better. I climbed the circular stairs past our office on the second floor, then the one on the third floor, then opened a window and climbed onto the roof. No one to stop me. I stood at that ledge for so long, close enough to sway, close enough to eye the narrow walkway to the church where my broken skull would lie. The fall would take time. What held me at the edge was a vision of my parents staring at the mess of me. I hadn't seen that when I wrote my note. It had seemed cleaner. The sun rose. The staff started the day below. How did this look from a few buildings away? Not good to the two men yelling from a high apartment window at International House. Was I okay? Did I need help? To shut them up, I climbed inside slunk down the stairs and to my desk where an ordinary Monday had begun. The police showed up. I was neither dead nor safe. And I, began, I just want to say she, I, I published, was it four poems? It was four, right? Yeah. Five, all five of them? Okay. And those were the most emotional poems she has a poem, Hurt Hurting, right? It was hurting. That poem made me cry. Oh, my Lord. All of them did. They were brilliant and genius and beautiful. And, yeah. So I just wanted to, she, uh, she said she's going to read one. I was so excited, but I didn't know which one. But they were all, all five of them, just, they gripped me and just, oh, they were so good. That's, but hurting, that's good, hurting, Joan. Hurting made me cry. Like, I try not to get into the poems because I um, have mental issues but like some sometimes a poem would get me in and the poem hurting it yeah it was uh they're breathtaking so if you if you go to there and you don't read any other thing sorry Christy Christy's in it too <laughs> Christy's poems are good they're at the top so you don't gotta search for them but yeah like those her poems but Christy's is good too anyhow am I reading next Yes. Yes, you, that's what I was going to say. So, John, you're next. And also, you know, clearly you have chosen and can you enjoy reading poems? And so being an editor, that's definitely what you want, to have that kind of passion mm -hmm. um, breach uh, period. And, All and I've, been, I've been wanting to be an editor forever and ever and always, and I'm so excited to be able to read so many poems and it's only me so I get to be greedy and I don't have to share. Um, <laughs> wow, so, oh, I've, read, I've read so many just brilliant poems and, it, and it's amazing and the second issue is coming out Sunday and it's breathtaking also. I mean I know it's just me saying it and I, but yeah it's it's going to be exciting also. So my poem is um, has an epigraph and the picture of Ruth Bader Ginsburg with a quote, um, not fragile like a flower, fragile like a bomb. And I wanted to know where that came from, so I looked it up. And it was by Rao Singe. I'm, I'm butchering his name. But it was, she was not a fragile like a flower, she was fragile like a bomb. So I took that and created my own title. 
And um, the poem is titled, Not Fragile Like Rice Paper, Fragile Like Shrapnel. The axe head's weight tugs at the handle. Your firm grip loosens off his shoulders, letting breath exit from a balloon's neck. A quick rush and wood splits in two halves, which can no longer secure to your chest. Distance becomes an orbit, while air fluctuates. Thoughts spittle like two birds falling. The splinters wet with sap. The bond, a proposal reminiscing and drifting, our vows now two fractions. An inhale incubates and eggshells and infringement. And that's that poem. I love that poem, even the first time I read it. <laughs> yeah, I was supposed to read it last week, but I didn't show up. <laughs> it's deaf. It's okay, you read it this week. So yeah. Thank you, thank you, You're John. Welcome. Yep. Um, I want to make sure that I didn't miss anybody for reading. You don't, Jesse or Laura. You don't have no, a poem, for no, Jesse or Laura. Jesse will do one. Fantastic. What was that? John. Y'all don't have a poem, Jesse. Everybody left us. Jesse. No, there's only there's only a few. I guess I wouldn't be well, too embarrassed to read if you want if you don't mind. I have a very short one I've been working on that. I'm not sure if it's done. Jump in. No, that's awesome. I'm proud of you, Laura. Jump in. <laughs> and then. Okay, this is um, Travel in the Time of COVID. Black licorice road spools out, feeds ravenous tires as you follow the AAA triptych in your mind. No need for compass, maps, or street signs on this tour where you make your own roadside attractions. So much better than statues of Bunyan and Babe the Big Blue Ox, Carhenge, or that giant ball of twine in Kansas. And that's that mm. poem. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Thanks. That's awesome. You, I, oh. I see you've taken up the, the task of uh, ending your poems with John's, uh, and that's that poem. <laughs> Yeah, it's a great way I mean, to end it. Then, then there's just no mystery and no pause where people go, "Well, is it? Is that it?" <laughs> I did an interview the other day, my first like real interview, which made me really excited. And so I read my poem and I said, "And that's that poem." And she said, "Can you read that a poem, poem again, but without that, so <laughs> I can edit it out easier?" And I was like, "Sorry, it's it's turned into my little trademark, and it's a." the habit now she's like that's okay but after you're done read just pause for like five seconds and don't say anything <laughs> <laughs> i was like all right Headline. <laughs> oh no oh sorry no worries john i was gonna say um i added friend requested you and i'm gonna message you i hope that's okay i like talking i like your poems so deal with, <laughs> deal with it not <laughs> But I, I hope you submit to uh, my journal, um, my magazine. It has everyone. So like, and my my goal is to have like little littler poets published with bigger poets, and hopefully, you know, the people who admire you um, are excited that they are in the issue with you. Because I know like, I've <laughs> some of these people I've published, I've never been in a magazine with. But I know I'd be, I would be really, really excited. Like the first issue, I have Ray Armin Trout, um, JJ Hans. I, I'm gonna butcher her name. And like really, you know, big poets and medium poets. And, and like I said, I publish poems, not poets. So if the poem's good, it's going in. And I don't care who, what, you know, who you are. I don't care if you won a Pulitzer Prize or if you've never been published before. And that's my goal. So, so I hope you submit. And I message, and I message you and send you the links stuff again so it's easier i love your poetry i like that you can write brevity very well thanks john i appreciate that and i think i admire the sort of um what you're saying about magazines um sorry you guys got to start my video again um <laughs> what you were saying about starting a magazine like I, I admire the sort of idea of like you were saying bigger poets but like just sort of the the how far along they are in the career how much they've published versus po people who've never published before because i think that i believe that, that like everybody sort of has that 
poetry inside them. They are, are all poets and how much you want to sort of become a poet, you know, and look at the world through the, that lens, um, then you can do that. So that's cool. Yeah. Good luck with that, man. Yeah, and I'll check it out for sure. All right, thank you. And yeah, my issue is, is a lot of magazines, they'll look at the poet instead of the poems. And if they know the poet, they'll publish it. And if they don't, they toss it to the side. And I hate that because like I've read a lot of really good poems by nobodies. And so I want to give everyone a voice and a chance. And, and two, with the internet, you can do that. Because like my first issue I said is 30 different poets and it's 50 pages long. So I can, and, and two after, it's, it's crazy too. After the first issue came out, I was getting five submissions a day and now I'm getting 20 submissions a day. So I figure next week it might be like 40 or 50. <laughs> and then my- get un Unwieldy. That, that's awesome yeah. though. It's nice to have uh, abundance of riches. And uh, mm -hmm. that's fantastic. Guys with no, headed my, my response time is with, within 30 minutes to the same day. Sometimes oh. I will take a moment to, you know, you know look at Facebook. But um, I figure when, when that time comes, when it takes me three days to start responding to people, I'll adjust it. But that's my goal. I want to get, you know, 100 submissions a day. And, and I want every, I want, I'm greedy. I want, I want everyone's poems. <laughs> Screw these other magazines. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to know our series. Thank you, John. We Thank love you, you Melissa. So <laughs> this is the first time you've not it's been crazy for you usually it's like maybe once or twice but you know it's insane but no, it's definitely been it's definitely been rough this time jesse do you want to read before we stop uh, yeah sure real quick uh, awesome thank you uh Coming from the Navajo Nation, uh, I want to say rest in peace to uh, Ernest Nez, next to one of the 200,000. Um, dealing with that kind of heavy right here. So this is called Herd Immunity. Prepare your workplace for severe weather. OSHA Preparedness and Response Guidelines 2020. Oxygen tanks are secured in overhead compartments. Walkers folded, stored neatly under seats. Dentures wrapped delicately in paper towels rest on in flight safety manuals. In flight entertainment today is dial M for murder. Stewardess strolls smiling down the aisle serving. Oreo pudding, insulin, calcium with vitamin D. Liver spotted, tremoring hands clutch, faded Polaroids of adult grandkids. A million will die like airplanes of elders, raining down, blotting out sky, blood orange burning. Ernest. Damn, Jesse. Thank you. That's not one you brought to um, Pam's class. I don't remember it. It's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. How many masks did you and your wife end up sewing? We sewed uh, lost over 2,000. It's four months. That's what I was going to say. I mean, they have thousands of masks that they sewed and Distributed. It's wow. amazing. Thank you. I just want to know so much for being here. I deeply apologize for my internet. <laughs> and this is after buying a hot spot. <laughs> uh, so the gerbils will Thanks be beaten. This is great. Thank you. So and I, I'm seeing your attic. That'll, that'll be our before shot of Ag. We expect an after shot. Yes, absolutely. I think I think what you should do is just like shellac it so, you know, it's <laughs> easy to clean it and just leave it like that. That's freaking awesome. 
just leave it all open space. You could put like little speakers up there and some music when you're up there, make it like a writing space. Yeah, reading, I mean, that's the dream is sort of to keep it as like a writing space. Um, there, the vision hasn't been fully realized yet, like in terms of what it will become, but. But I think it looks awesome like with all the boards and how the boards are set up and, and I would just, if my attic, if my house isn't 110 years old, my attic didn't look like it had dead people in it. I'd totally do that kind of stuff. I mean, I'm not scared of the dead people, but I also don't want to find one up there still, you know, crawling. <laughs> like I went up there one time and I was like, hmm, this is enough. So the entrance is like a small barn door, which is really cool. But the inside of it is, is not as amazing as yours. <laughs> okay, so next uh, next week is uh, from X only. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much. I know my Hi. internet's still spotty, but I wanted to say everybody be well, be safe. Thank you for being here tonight. It was have nice to week. have you on the farm. Thanks, guys. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thanks. I'm gonna mess with you. Bye, Laura. <laughs> <laughs>